Welcome to February Community Call. Um, we are focusing on Teams call queues and auto attendance. Um, just a couple things uh, we're going to be doing. A little quick uh, kickoff, talk about the community a little bit for those who are new. Um, then get to our content. We'll have some final closeouts as well as the survey so you guys can win something. Um, as always, make sure um, respect uh, each other in here. There's, uh, you know, you have the opportunity to be able to chat with each other, please. But this is a, a digital event. Please respect each other's. Um, um, what am I thinking? Please respect each other. Thank you. All right. With that, we did have this. Uh, we have you muted um, later on at the end. If we have time, then we're going to unmute. If you want to be able to come off and talk, you can do that. Otherwise, just please throw the questions in the chat. We're going to answer those throughout the course of the session. If you're not familiar with the uh, Microsoft Community Connection, this is a uh, community where you have the ability to connect with other customers. We have these events monthly, um, and we may be uh, bringing other events throughout the course of the year. Um, but it's a great opportunity for you to connect with other customers, other people who are utilizing Teams um, phone uh, for your their organization. Um, so the link to get connected, if you are not part of that community Microsoft team, we have it set, set up, um, then we'll go in. And if Jonathan, you want to throw in the AKA for our registration, that would be great. Um, so please do that. Uh, we have about 300 people right now that are uh, members of that group. And we have uh, SMEs, internal people that are answering questions and other customers who are also answering customer, our questions. So I appreciate that. Upcoming events, March, uh, we have dynamic emergency calling coming up. Um, but again, it's the third Thursday of each month that we're doing this. Um, and then we'll put out uh, in that in other areas to be able to let you know what our other upcoming events are. But look forward to that one in March. We have a really good person. A couple of people are going to be talking about emergency calling. As mentioned before, all our YouTube um, has all our rec previous recordings. So please go out there and subscribe. As Jonathan likes to, likes to say, hit that subscribe button or smash that subscribe button. Please do that. Um, and anything from our team's phone event, we are also going to be throwing out there. So make sure that you're doing that. Uh, today, I'm going to take, a, I'm going to actually present as well as my colleague Scott uh, Francis. We're going to be walking you through the whole call queue and auto attended piece that are part of Microsoft Teams. Um, and Oliver was asking about how do we get that uh, link to that event, the Teams phone event. Um, if you look up in there, it's actually something that Jonathan threw in there. It's the Teams phone summit. So go ahead and click on that and get registered, Oliver. All right. Well, with that, let's get into our content and kind of talk through, excuse me, the whole idea of Teams phone. Uh, we're going to use the term voice applications because really inside Teams, that's how we describe them. Um, but really, the voice applications are either you're going to have a call queue or you may have an auto attendant to be able to help. So let's talk about what those are and kind of set the stage. So just a quick intro. Then we're going to get into some of the prerequisites. Um, specifically, what do you need ahead of time before you get started? Licensing, um, accounts, things like that. Then we're going to actually go into a demo on both sides, the call queue and the auto attendant. And Scott's going to walk you through that. Then we're going to go through some other considerations, things you really need to think about as well as reporting. And then finally, some planning pieces beforehand, um, making sure that you get all your ducks in a row before you start that process. Um, so let's go through and kind of talk about the first thing, which is really about what are these things called auto um, call queues and auto attendance. So really think about it is that auto attendant is that automated, hey, you come into that phone, you, know, you call a number, you come into that organization, that's those greetings, that's that tree that you see, that IVR type scenario where people are then going to choose what is going to be that next step as I'm interacting with this particular customer. Um, things you're going to see is there's going to be a built-in menu that you can then set up. Um, we can do things like text-to-speech. We can actually add in pre-recorded messages if that is the case. Um, we'll have business and holiday hours, time of the day, things that we can adjust. We'll walk through that as well. And the ability to be able to have um, um, operator speech recognition in 14 different languages. 
Additionally, on the call queue side of things, that's really where if you're coming from a Cisco background, um, the, that hunt group, right? That group of people who may be answering that call that comes in from the auto attendant. Keep this in mind. It's very important to understand. They can go together, right? One goes right into the other, or you could actually have it go right into the call queue, depending upon what your business scenario is. We do have a lot of customized capabilities with that call queue, including music hold, call overflow, timeouts, and even e share e voicemail uh, capabilities. Um, so it's important to really understand how that works and then being able to then work within your organization and how those things are going to uh, work together. So high level, we're going to get into this a little bit more. A realistic, if you take a look at the, the options that are in here, there's a lot of different options. And I will tell you that um, anything that's in the dark purple are going to be the ones that are out of the box, right? Anything that is not, right, these down here, you're going to have third-party integrations that's going to help out with the call recording and queue management, wallboard, and those types of things. But there is a lot of things that out of the box, and this is the nice thing, think about it, out of the box, you get these capabilities right out of right there. And you don't have to pay additional for it, right? So that could then have, you may have maybe a few dozen use cases that this will then apply to as opposed to having to go to a full-fledged contact center type scenario, right? So just keep that in mind as you're taking a look at this, where would this fit within your organization and how would it work with the, the groups that you have currently? And as I was mentioning, I mean, auto attendants and call views work together, right? So I have those calls that are coming in, are funneled into my organization through a phone number. Once I get to that, then I have my tree that I'm going to set up, right? Giving out what kind of a greeting I'm going to have. What are my business hours? What's going to happen after hours? Um, so I want to get that all set up correctly, and we'll give you some tools to help out with that later on as well. But then a lot of times those are going to go to another voice application, right? That, that voice app that's called a call queue. In the call queue, you're going to set up exactly what's going to happen when it comes into that queue, which agent is going to end up getting it, in what order, if that's going to be the case. And then what are the things going to happen when maybe all my agents are busy versus uh, or, um, you know, What's going to happen if an agent opts out? Those types of things, we can set those up at the call queue level to make sure that you guys uh, be able to get that uh, customer taken care of if that's the case. Okay, so just an example, which you can see here. But again, the idea is is that they work together to be able to help out with this solution. All right, with that, hey Scott, I'm going to turn it over to you if you want to kind of talk about the prerequisites. Go ahead. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Don, for the orientation. Uh, hey, everybody. Nice to be here. Proud to be part of the community and connected with you all. Um, I'm just going to jump in and share my desktop. I think um, Don covered that pretty well. So we'll get right into um, how this works. I know the topic was deep dive. Um, it takes about 15 minutes if you're going really fast to build an auto attendant and call key flow. So we probably won't um, get into all the gory details, but we'll give a quick overview. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And then I'm also gonna open a portal to the Teams Admin Center. So as you may be telecom-centric people in your IT organization, you may not have access to the M365 Admin Portal. We understand that, we see that a lot. This portal was designed for um, role-based access control to telecom-centric uh, workers. And in here, um, if you've been in the Teams Admin Center before, you'll recognize the voice sidebar, and we're talking about these things down here at the bottom. So the auto attendance, call queues, holidays, resource accounts, and voice app policies. So let me turn on, turn, get them off the spotlight for a second. All right. Um, so prerequisites what we're going to need before we get started with those other pieces too is you're going to need a Teams phone resource account. That Teams phone resource account is something that you can set up within your organization. You go into uh, M365 Office Admin, into the purchase services, and you look for Teams phone resource accounts. With that, um, 
this is going to be based off of your licensing that you have within your organization. So any of your users that you have a phone system license, a phone standard system license, that's part of the, either the E5 or it's a standalone. If they have that, then this is what's going to happen from account perspective. As soon as you have that assign, those assigned, then you can go in and get for free your first 25 accounts. And then after that, um, for every 10 that you have licensed with that phone standard account, then you're going to get an additional license, right? So then you can then have these accounts for auto attendance and call queues, right? So any of those voice application styles, they will need this phone, phone resource account figured out. Uh, things like toll-free numbers, those types of things, you want to make sure that you include that as well in those conversations. So literally, this kind of walks through that process of how to be able to do that. Um, go into the Teams admin, look for the phone, uh, phone resource account. Um, again, it's a $0 SKU, right? But you have to have those other licenses in there for that to be able to, to really work. Then... Um, from a call queue agent, right? The person's actually gonna be picking up that call. Um, either they're gonna have to have the E5 or E3 with that standalone. And that's that license that I was talking about as a prerequisite to get these uh, resource accounts. Um, correct, uh, Manish, there is no cost for the team's phone resource li uh, account license, except <laughs> if you go over your allocation, Right. So if, say, for instance, you have so many um, that are phone standard license or E5 license and you go over that e equation, right, the equation I mentioned up back up here, right, this one right over here, then you're going to have to pay for them. Other outside of that, though, no, if you don't use them all, great, then you don't have to worry about it. So you should be fine. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, Ultimately, the call agents have to have this enterprise voice enabled, true, to really be able to then utilize this, okay? Um, and Sean, what are those numbers again? Yeah, it's these right here. If you want to take a screenshot, go ahead, get 25, and then it's for every 10, you get an additional license, okay? Yeah, no problem, okay. Did we get Scott back on? I don't see Scott back on again. He must be really having problems with it. So let's jump in. I know he was gonna do a demo, um, but some general planning things that we can talk about. Apologize for the slide for some reason, things got a little off. Make sure you come up with a good naming convention wrapped around how you're going to find these. For instance, as an example, start off with AA for your auto attendant, right? AA dash and then something specific. Maybe it's the business unit, maybe it's the building location, wherever you're gonna go from there. And same thing with call queue. What is that purpose then of that particular call queue? Um, and then doing things like when you have a voice app, make sure you have it categorized by that so that um, you know that this has to have a license associated with it. Um, more than one resource account can be added to that voice application, right? So. Um, more than one phone number can be a part of that. And the nice thing about these is you can nest them. Realistically, when you're doing an auto attendant going into a call queue, you can actually have an auto attendant into another auto attendant going into a call queue if that's the case. Uh, example, you may have a main number that you have four or five different locations that you then can then jump to that auto attendant there, right? So I want to go to, to um, I want to go to Minneapolis location from there. It'll jump you to another auto attendant that will take you then from there um, into whom you need to connect with at that point. Okay. Maximum transition to single call, 25, right? So it only can go up to 25. So if that nesting, you can't do two more than that to keep in mind. Okay. Still no Scott. Oh, you must have had a really hard crash then. All right. So let me double check. See any other questions? Yeah, so Manish, if we have uh, 10,000 E5 licenses, then does it mean we're covered? Yes, you are really covered on that. Remember, the first 25 are, uh, you get them, and then every 10 after you get another one. So you should be fine. Um, no cost for the team's phone account, no longer any limit to uh, 
no longer any limit to how many. Um, yeah, it, it's all based off of your licensing. Yep, so thank you, Colin, for saying that. Absolutely. Okay, in fact, I'm going to jump into my Teams Admin Center and kind of walk you through a little bit as far as what we see from a auto attendant, what we see from a call queue um, side of things. So if I take a look at, in the voice section, um, I wanna go down to resource accounts. This is really where um, we get the resource accounts kind of set up from this side of things and make sure everybody is, is going. Create the resource account, you're gonna have to go in and license it on the other side, right? That's that Teams phone standard license. What I mean by the other side, you're going into the office admin and you're going in and adding that license to that account that you created. Once you get those set up then, you can then start utilizing them within the auto attendance or the call queues that you have set up. For instance, I have a main auto attendant here uh, account and then I have my sales. So if I go into then um, the auto attendance side of things, I have one already created. We're just going to walk through this, kind of talk through some of the different options that you have. You have the ability to then designate a phone number along with that. That will go with that account that you're going to set up with this particular scenario. Um, I can then set up what's called an operator, right? So this is somebody I'm going to use later on when I'm doing my my options for this auto attendant, and say, hey, is there one person that if I want to designate as that uh, main person I connect with this particular AA? Great, well, let's do that. Let's get that set up, um, and they're going to be managing those incoming calls. Set your time zone. Set your language and then set your voice inputs so that they, others can then use their voice to be able to then uh, do a directory search if that's the case. We want that to be able to make it easier for our customer or for somebody coming into our auto attendant to be able to find somebody if that's the case. If we jump to the next section, then what do I wanna do from a call flow side of things, right? So are we talking about, are we doing no greeting whatsoever? Just have it go through to the next, next thing and then start playing whatever I want for my my menu options. Um, do I want to play an audio file? And that can be an MP3, which is nice. You can have up to a five megabytes file size, but it does have to be MP3 wave or uh, WMA to be able to do that. So I'll have to choose that. Or do I want to add a greeting, right? So then I can literally say, okay, so welcome to Contoso. Then what I want to do, do I want to then go through and disconnect? And maybe in scenarios you might want that, redirect that call if that's the case, or play the menu options. If you play the menu options, it will allow you to go straight through. Options include force listen, right? So you want them to go through the entire um, menu before they can then make that choice, or maybe they want it, you just want to let them make that choice right away, okay? I can play the audio file. I can add the greeting for what I want to have. Okay, then I actually have to go through and add in what do I want to do for my uh, options, right? So press one for sales, two for support, right? I can do that. Um, and then if I want to add like an operator, I can add an operator in there, right? And that would then go to um, operator, and that's going to go to our uh, person. Megan, that we set up the previous screen. Then we can do search by directory. And this is giving the ability to be able to say, hey, do I want to do it by name? Or if we have extension dialing, then we can have it set up by extension dialing at that point. All right, so I'm going to go next for now. Then it gives me the ability to go through call, uh, my call flow, right? These are uh, business hours. What do I want to do? What is our... Uh, what are we going to be setting for that? Um, you can get pretty detailed as far as, hey, I want to add some more in here. Um, um, so maybe we have a lunch time that things are going to be set up. What What is that going to look like? Then you can do after hours. So if what's going to happen if it doesn't go after that, all right, at, outside of this, what's going to happen? Then you can say play a greeting. What are your options? I'm going to send it to Megan if that's the case, or it could be a voicemail, right?
right? So you can do it that way, um, depending upon how you want that uh, to interact. Oh, by the way, you could also do another set of menu options if that's the case for an after hours type scenario. Additionally, um, you then have holiday hours that you can go set, holidays that you can set up in here. Um, and then, uh, then you can have, when you go into that scope, well, how do you want that to work? So on 4th of July, this is what we're going to end up happening, right? We're going to have a greeting saying, hey, we're closed for the 4th of July. Please use a number. And then we can have that go to voicemail if that's the case, right? So that's one of my options I have. I can have it go to an external number or to another voice app that I can then have them go through depending upon the scenario. All right, we're good on July 4th. The other thing you can do is you can do what's called a dial scope. So depending upon what you set up previous couple of screens as far as the um, dial by name or dial by extension, if you do by dial by name, you can actually include or exclude groups. So for instance, maybe it's for a particular building and you have some VPs that are in that building. You, do, you want to be able to say uh, custom, Right. Or I want to say I want to custom exclude. And so if I have a group that said, oh, you know what, um, I don't want this group to have it or these individuals to be uh, on that dial, then you can set that up so that nobody uh, that somebody from that group is not going to get uh, part of that directory tree. Then you set up the resource account, and this is where you just go ahead and add that resource account that you already had set up um, and to get that phone number set up on that side. And then last but not least, then there's the authorized users capability. Um, authorized users allow you to be able to have end users be the go-to um, for making some changes for uh, auto attendant and call queues. And so part of that is you got to get them set up first for that within that call queue. Then you also have to set up a voice application policy, which is found in this area to be able to say, hey, um, and what can they do? What kind of things can they make changes to? All right. So high level, um, those are the the, the uh, those are the pieces to auto attendant that you can then set up. Now, granted, very brief, very brief overview of it, but it kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do on the call queue side. And by the way, while you're doing this, uh, uh, can an authorized user be in an Azure AD group? That is a great question. I don't remember. I believe we have that capability. Nope, it's gonna be ind individual users, it looks like at this point. All right, so let's go through call queues. So call queue is that, that group of people that you're gonna have connected um, into this answering the call. And so I'm gonna set up the resource account Right. In this case, I don't have a phone number assigned because it's just coming from my auto attendant. I don't need to have a phone number associated with that. But I want to do a calling I, uh, a caller ID. Right. What number is it going to look like if it's going out? Right. That's what where you can get that set up. And of course, then the language that you want to have this set up. Do you want to have for the call group? Right. You already did the auto attendant. Do you want to have a greeting? Yes or no. Again, same options. Play audio or greet uh, meet, um, uh, greeting message. Apologize for that. And do you want on hold? Well, a lot of times with call queues, you may not want to have that. So this is the options that you have in here. Then you can then choose how it's going to be call answering. And call answering, and I'm going to throw a term out here. You can have a voice enabled channel within Teams, and we'll, you can find that information, or you can have users and groups. If you, and this is where you can use Azure AD to be able to bring in a group if that's the case. You can add users, and by the way, depending upon how you uh, set up the call queue, the order that you put in is the order they're gonna go, right? Or it could be randomized depending upon the scenario. So in this case, I have a team, I have a Microsoft team already set up that has this capability and I do a Teams enabled channel. And then conference mode. Now, conference mode actually allows that for when it happens, it's it's literally like a meeting behind the scenes. Um, and so it's actually a little bit more efficient um, as far as how it connects. Uh, it's going to be quicker and easier. It's going to be a much better so, uh, solution as you're doing these. Then you have to choose agent selection. 
from that agent selection, you have a couple different options. You have the auto uh, attendant routing and love these buttons because this really gives you the idea what's going on. Um, then you have serial versus round and versus uh, longest idle, right? Who's been on there the longest that hasn't gotten any anything. I highly would highly suggest looking at the whole presence piece, right? So it's going to take a look and see who is on, right? Who's available, who's busy, and who's offline in that call queue. Now, understand with all of these, when you have that set up in Teams, you have the ability to do what's called opt out as well. So if opt out is on, then they have the ability to go in there and go check and then opt out of that particular call queue. And then you can change the call agent alert time. Now, I will highly suggest that if you, anytime you see something like this, this is kind of like the industry standard. If you go much longer um, or even quicker, um, there should be a rationale behind doing those types of things. All right, so then exception handling. And we have the ability to be able to say, what happens if I have caller flow? If I have 10 agents and I have 11th call comes in, what do I want to do? Right, so I can then say disconnect or redirect this call to, and just like I had in my auto attendant, I can then say, how do I want that to happen? Do I want to go to a voicemail? Do I want to go shared mail, shared voicemail? I can set that up so that if it ever does go over that um, number of agents, then it's be able to handle that or whatever I have for my call queue. Um, call timeout, what's going to happen, right? It's been ringing, ringing, ringing. What do I want to do when it happens? Uh, maximum time for that, uh, disconnect or redirect. And then um, what happens if there's no agents that are signed in to, have, uh, to be able to do this call or take this call? What do we want to do? And then we can say apply settings to uh, new incoming messages versus ones that are already in the queue. Um, and how do I want to handle that? Then set up the authorized users just like the auto attendant. Right, um, get those people in there again. Users versus uh, AD group is at this point. All right, see a lot of the activity going on in the chat. So hopefully you're getting your questions answered. Um, and I know that we do have a lot of things happening in the near future. Um, I will make sure that this deck is available as far as these options. So let me uh, quickly get through the next couple. Hang on, here we go. Other considerations to think about. I mentioned voice-enabled channels. Voice-enabled channels allow you to be able to do a call queue inside a Teams channel. Nice thing about this is whoever is an owner is considered kind of the supervisor for this call queue and then can add or remove users inside the channel, right? Inside that team, inside the channel, be able to help um, with managing those users. Um, then inside there, uh, agents, depending on if you check that box to be able to opt out, we'll be able to then opt in and opt out inside that team's channel. You can see call history, you can see who's on, um, who's in a call, who's not in a call. You're gonna see some of those rudimentary um, uh, agent type information that's there. Additionally, um, as I mentioned, you can then set a voice application caller ID. So what is that caller ID if it's going out, right? So, um, and then you can then say, hey, I want to be able to also call as myself or maybe it's on behalf of that particular call queue. Um, so that is an option you can do as, when you're setting that up as well. And I mentioned that before. Just keep that in mind. And then the whole shared voicemail handling. If you do have an Office 365 shared mailbox, it's important to understand that, yeah, you're going to be able to see that uh, see that from a shared perspective. But, you know, really um, getting that information into that team is going to be important for you to be able to then get that voicemail and say, hey, I want to be able to answer that. I'll go and click on that, listen to that voice mailbox. Um, this is an example of how this can be done utilizing Power Automate, which actually does have clause into Teams uh, for those uh, into voicemail to be able to say, hey, this came in. Uh, let me get that set up so that you can then read that, uh, listen to that voicemail and then answer that question. All right, so from a reporting side of things, I'm gonna just quickly do this again. We'll get you these temp, uh, this deck so you can Click on the links and use them. 
If you haven't looked at the Power BI uh, call queue and auto attendant templates, please do so. Um, it's very important. This is a great way to be able to get that more um, dashboard type scenario information. Understand though, everything is, it's a 28 day moving window. All that data that's sitting up there is 28 days. If you want to have it beyond that, you're gonna have to look at a, way, a solution to be able to pull that in. A third party tool might be able to do that as well, but pull that down to a database and then be able to pull it from there. Um, and you could use the Power BI desktop to be able to look at this. Additionally, um, here's a, some of the screenshots from that. Um, and I'll get to, because I know we're running out of time. If you are having problems with any of the call queues and auto attendance, I don't know about you, but um, I, I don't think this is used enough. If you go into Office 365 and Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you go and click on the, the question mark button, you can then go Diag Auto Attendant or Diag Call Queue, and it will actually run through. You throw in the, um, the URL, or I should say the um, username, right? Whatever it is for that account, right? Email address for that account. Um, and then it will run the test and tell you what's going on. If there's an issue with a policy, if there's an issue with that particular call queue, maybe it's not licensed right, it'll let you know what's going on. And then somebody was asking before about um, Visio diagrams. We do actually have the Visio diagrams, but some recommendations, we'll throw this at you. You can take a look at this later on. Um, planning, making sure you're collecting the business needs, everybody, make sure you're having that conversation with them. Um, and then here are the links. So the aka.ms CQ setup Visio, Visio and the AA setup Visio. Those are the two that you want if you want to have the ability to be able to have the shapes and everything for being able to do your diagrams. They actually give you an example in there that you can use and then go from there. As an example, this is what it would kind of would look like. You have uh, to start with, and then you can then modify as needed. All right. So I know we're a little over time. Apologize for that. But there was a ton of questions in there. Um, do, do we get, I know that uh, Jeff Bart and Colin, hey, thank you, Colin. Really appreciate you jumping in there and answering some questions.